Are you looking to integrate your form with Stack B because you want to send the data to a Stack B database? Well, that is possible with JotForm, and I'm going to show you how on this video. Welcome to JotForm. My name is George, and today's video is about integrating JotForm with Stack B. Every time that someone fills out your form, that information is going to be sent out to Stack B so it gets added to their database. That way we can keep track, backup or any other reason you might want to send that information to Stack B. So let's get started with our form. Let's create a brand new form for this demo and we're going to start from scratch. Use classic form and we are going to start with adding elements in this case. This could be any random form that you built and you want to send information. So let's go ahead and add full name, phone number. Let's add a short text, drop down and the email. Okay. Um, any random element that you add here is possible to send that information to stack B. So the first question would be, for example, what is your favorite color? Just an example. Another drop down question could be like, and we'll add some random information here, like SUV, vans, cars, and trucks. Okay, just an example and the email. Okay, now how are we gonna integrate this form with Stack B? Let's first name it really quickly, Stack B, just so we can locate it easily. Okay, let's head on over to settings, integrations, and for this, we're going to use webhook. Okay. So in this um, integration, we need a webhook from the automation system that we're going to use for this automation. We are going to use Pabli connect, which is an automation system similar to Integromat, Zapier, Integrately and other automation systems. But this one is the one we're going to use for this demo. So let's create a brand new workflow. In this case, we are going to call it dot form and stack B. Okay, let's create it. There we go. And the first thing that it's going to ask us for this automation is the trigger. Like, where is it going to grab that information to send over to Stack B? So in this case, we are going to search for dot form. We're going to select it. We're going to select the trigger. So when a new response is created, it's going to receive that data. So this is the webhook that we need. Let's go back into dot form. This is where we're going to add that webhook. Let's go ahead and complete integration. And there we go. Let's go ahead, finish. Let's go back into Pavli connect and it should start receiving a webhook response once we fill it out. So let's fill out this form one time. So it knows where these um, elements are going to be tied to. So let me fill this out really quickly. We go. I'll add a random phone number. What is your favorite color? In this case, it's blue. Um, I like SUVs and test email at test.com submit. Okay. So now it's sent the data for the first time over here. There we go. Here's that information received on Pavli connect. This is the first step. Okay. We received the information. Now we have to tie this with stack B. Okay. So the next step is the action. We already finished the trigger where it's going to grab the information. Now we need to add an action. And in the action, we are going to search for stack B. Okay. Here it is. There we go. What do we want to do with stack B once we receive that response from dot form? Well, we might want to create a row. We want, we might want to update a row, fetch row table, search for record or list a column. In this case, we are going to create a row. Okay. Let's go ahead and connect. We are going to add a new connection for this. And what it's going to ask us is the API key. So for this, let's head on over to stack B. Okay. I am already logged in and this is what you have to do. Head on over to your avatar. Let's click on it and head on over to account. This will open up the account settings and down here we could see API key. Okay. Let's copy this API key and let's go back to our public connect, enter the API key, save. There we go. And now it's reading the workflows from our stack B. Okay. So in my stack B, I have two workspaces, which is workspace one and workspace two. In this case, I will add a new stack, which is the name for the database 
for this demo. So in this case, I'll create a new stack. There we go. Let's name our stack jot form so we can locate it easily. And now we have our columns. So in this case, we have the name column notes. In this case, this is um, added by default, but we're going to get rid of this column. Actually, all of these, because that's not the data that we need. So depending on the data that you need, you add a column to this. So in this case, let's add our first column right here. It's going to be a short text and let's go check out our formula quickly. So we're asking for the name, a phone number. So let's add phone number. There we go. Let's apply it. Let's add another column. And we're going to add, for example, what is your favorite color? So in this case, we'll add color and then cars. So this one is called column. Oh, sorry. Let me go ahead and rename this. This is color. Apply another column for cars. And the last one is going to be email. And we're going to use the email type of column on stack B. Okay, there we go. Our table is ready for this. Let's go back into public connect. Let's refresh right here. So it refreshes the data because we created the stack after the connection. There we go. Now, what stack are we going to use? In this case, we named it jot form. So here it is. It's going to read the columns that we have available there so we can tie these to our jot form. There we go. The columns that we've just added on stack B are right here. Name, phone number, color, cards and email. Now, what we want to do with this automation is tell it what information is tied to each one of these. So from the jot form response, we are going to grab, for example, the name. And let's add another response for the last name. There we go. The phone number, we're going to tie it to the phone number field. So in this case, here it is. The color is going to be grabbed from the response to color. Remember, we filled this once. That way we can locate everything like we're doing right now. Cars, again, for the response, let's go down here. I chose SUV and the email was a test email. Where is that? Here it is. Let's save and send a test. OK, that's been sent. Let's go check it out on Stack B. Here it is. It's just been added right there really quickly. So name, phone number, color, cars and email. OK, we're integrated. That's the automation. Now let's test it out. So let's go into our jot form to publish. Let's test it out. This could be a random user. Let's just say, for example, Johnny. Johnny Dean and again, random phone number. What color does he like? We'll say, well, he likes red. OK, what type of colors does he like? Well, let's say trucks and the email we will say is test two at test.com. And let's go ahead and submit it. Now this is integrated. So this data should appear on our stack B. So let's go ahead on over there. And here it is. We've already integrated. So what does that mean? Anytime that someone fills out that particular form, that data is going to be added automatically to our stack database here on Stackbeam. That helps us for backup purposes, for their automation or other things that you might want to do with it. But that is how you integrate JotForm with Stackbeam. We thank you all for watching and we'll see you on our next tutorials. Bye bye.